I call this meeting at 1.16. Um, okay, first, Councilor Snell is going to do the invocation for you. Last, please. Precious Heavenly Father, be with us, Lord, as we go through this committee meeting today. Bless the attendance we have here today, Lord, and uh, just give us wisdom, strength to uh, make our decisions today. And uh, help the presenters, because the hospital and the health is a great need we have in our communities. And we just ask you, Lord, to be with us as we go through this meeting. Thank you, Lord. Amen. <coughs> Ms. Kelly, will you call roll, please? Yes, ma'am. Jim Applebright? Present. Dick Lay? Here. Bill England? Here. Jack Baker? Here. Joe Bird? Julia Cutts? Jody Fishingham? Here. Meredith Fraley? John Barvin? Here. Tyler Gloria Jordan? Frankie Hargis? Present. Chet Poskin Jr.? Here. Lee Keener? Here, the one. Curtis Snell? Here. David Thornton? David Walkingston? Here. Kara Callen Watts? Ani. We do have a quorum. Thank you. I entertain a motion for approval of the minutes. Motion. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. All in favor of the minutes. If they are approved, you're ready for you to look at. Say aye. Aye. All opposed? The minutes are approved. Um, reports. First, we've uh, got Claire Moore, as usual, Mr. George Bell. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, you, uh, we sent out the report early um, on their understaffing report recruiting a clinical director, two internal medicine docs, uh, as many ER positions as we can get our hands on. And uh, we actually hired the two nurse practitioners for uh, urgent care for the walk-in clinic. Uh, business are up. And uh, collections are up. Any particular questions? Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I was trying to make my math reconcile on contract health service funding. And so if I total the funded denials and deferred, it comes to 1271. We talked about this out in the hall, I wasn't sure. So if I take the 1271, funding's at 32.6%. But if I take the 1627, it's 25.4%. You know which one it might be? There's the, the discrepancy between those numbers added up in the total case files to committee. Uh -huh. there, are some, there are some cases that come back in that were funded out of prior year money, out of X money. And they're not listed. What you see over here is funded in the aisle of the bird, are, are current cases, out of current year money. So there's past year cases. And that the difference between the 1271 and 1627, then are that number is funded in past year money and we don't see that? <coughs> Not right now. No. Is there, because that's, I think, useful additional information. I don't know how easy it's it is to track, but it's it, not, it's, yeah, I can add, I could can, you add that? I can add funded current year and funded uh, prior year. Okay, and then. That would, that would, that would put it on here and then the total. Is, they usually match. Okay. And, uh, that, that would back up there. And I guess the other thing that might be of interest, I don't know if other council people have anything to add on this, but it would be how long it took to pay those. If there's an average or range. Well, are you looking for, because a lot of these, <coughs> if you go in the hospital, you may have one specialist that did a consult that we may never see a bill on for a year and a half until it goes to collections. Nobody knows that this doctor's even okay. billed anything. As soon as we get it, we, we cut a purchase order on and, and send it to them. On the other hand, as many of you have found out, we'll send a purchase order out on a case right away as soon as the referral's cut, and then the vendor sets and holds it and holds it and holds it. We've had hold, hold uh, purchase orders over a year, all the time sending letters to your constituents and our patients telling them that this bill is due, this bill is due, and we have sent multiple purchase orders to these vendors. So, um, I mean, we can, I can try, I can try to get that. They'll have to manually do that. Well, I don't want to 
add because I mean they need to be so. I, I'm, I'm still wanting to figure out if there's a non-manual way that something we already have. So it's, let me ask it this way: Are those? Is that how you have obligated prior year funds available? Is that this was a PO that was already obligated, and that's how you have that funding in a prior year to do that? What will happen is, is we'll obligate one, and <clears throat> say a second follow-up visit after surgery is a global visit, which is covered under the surgery mm -hmm. cost. We'll obviously end up obligating money for that. Well, it's never used. After the fact, we have to go in and de-obligate that and put it back in. Only that prior year budget. It, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, how about this? If we can just see what that looks like, okay. it, we, even if it's just this line item of the differential is those prior year funding prior year obligations being paid okay. and the number of cases and the amount of money associated with it. Okay. <clears throat> so if I look at that then just in the number of cases for current cases then it's at 32.6 percent are being funded out of Claremore Indian Hospital for contract service. And then I didn't see a note on there. Could you update me on the MRI machine? We haven't heard about that in some time. That so. is, we've done all, all, uh, all the work on our end of setting with uh, Bobby and Hugo Gonzalez in area office. Okay. I don't know. I know we have a designee from this body. I have asked for a timeline almost monthly uh, so that I could bring it to you. They said they'll work on it. Uh, Chairman Fulbright, is this something that we could send? I don't, and maybe it's already been done. I don't know what our designee's done. But is this something we can send a letter to the area office for? Because I know it's something the board was working on some time ago, but I don't know if it was ever finished or not. I don't know. I'll have to check into it later. Okay. Could you let us know if there needs to be a letter sent or something okay. so that we can... Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Okay. Thank you for your good report. I want to thank everybody that's here, all the directors and doctors. I know everybody has to take off time and their job, and we appreciate you being here. Next is um, the Cherokee Nation Health Services, uh, Dr. Montgomery, or who's filling in, Dr. Graham? I'll get started here. All righty. Come right on up. Good afternoon, counselors. Good to see everyone today. Um, everyone should have gotten our uh, committee report uh, earlier, and I'm not going to spend any time on it so that we can update you some uh, issues unless you all have any questions on it. You also have a... Oh, Councilor Watts, you have a question? Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, if I'm reading the report correctly, it looks like on our 5% set aside. So on the overall, the compacted contract health service, we have a... 97.6% approval rate, but then on the 5%, we're now at a 71.9% approval rate, or how do we count pended? We, that's one of the handouts we just gave you to that we were going to talk about in a little more detail. The CHS uh, dividend funds are one of the things. you got three handouts. Okay. On I that. can hold that until okay. that agenda item, but I have two more questions okay. really quick. It mentions the Markema membership, but it's not clear. I know this was a concern during budget hearings about the financial impact that we as a bounty ended up making on Markema. Is there, can we get a report next month about where that actually ends up and what is the reality? Are they having to pay memberships? I don't think I'm clear on this. And then um, are you going to be updating us on the $100 million in health care projects and if we yes. broke ground? Is that, okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Proceed, Dr. Thank you. Um, there were um, some handouts on your desk in addition to those CHS ones. We'll talk about the CHS ones earlier. The other one was about a uh, open house with uh, Eagle Man uh, for this Wednesday, and we wanted to make sure you all knew you were invited. And so uh, it would be great if you could make that. Uh, there are five issues that we wanted to update you about today, in addition to any questions you might have about those or other things. Uh, we're going to talk about the CHS dividend funds and the overall process, the flow chart. Uh, we'll give you a facilities update about the clinics uh, that are under operation. Uh, 
I'll do both of those reports, and then our CEO of the hospital, Brian Hill, is going to come up and talk to you about the feasibility study that's going on with the hospital and how we plan to proceed from there. And then Dr. Montgomery will come up and uh, give you a recruitment update and a little bit about the 90-day prescription update since last committee meeting. So those are the items that we'll be talking about. And since uh, Council Rock had a question about contract health, we'll start with that. Uh, you can see the, the three reports that are out there, and I might uh, yell at Mr. Hayes here to help with some of these questions as we go, but if you'll start out taking a look at this one that has the fund balance information on it. These are the summary fund balances for all of our uh, contract health service dollars. This year, they totaled a high, higher level than we've ever had before, and it was really because of that 5% dividend money. We didn't, uh, it took us a while to get off the ground to get started on spending that, and so uh, really at the beginning of this fiscal year, we had almost two years worth of accumulated funds to spend out of that account. And just so you get a flavor of what we would have on a normal basis, what we've been asked to budget for fiscal year 14 um, is 6.25 million. So you'll see our CHS fund balance go down uh, as of next year just because of that. Uh, if you take a look across that line, the 5% dividend line, you can see that we've essentially between paid claims and uh, open claims, and those are claims that have been obligated but not yet uh, fully paid, and they're obligated to the best of our staff's estimation of what the actual amount will be, so they should be uh, very close as to what the obligation amount is. Um, but you can see we only have about four and a half million dollars left this year. This report is after eight months. So if you were to go in and, and take a look at the total overall volume, um, the 14.5 of paid at the bottom and the 9.5 of the open, those total about 24 million dollars. And if you were to further estimate what we might spend the rest of the year, it will be between nine and 12 million dollars. Um, and so we may slow down a little bit on the, the funds that we have remaining. So we are on track to, to spend between 33 and, and potentially 36 million dollars uh, of CHS funds. Um, and so this year we will get that money spent and next year it will be back down to that 6.25 million level. Um, let me See if there's any questions on that, and I'll move on to the, this far more information. Councilor Lott, thank you. Councilor Lai. So just to make sure my mind's clear, the HIS compact is Hastings, right? That is that is all of Indian Health Services funds uh, that come in for all the clinics. In what counties? And, Does that uh, serve that inpatient, serves, outpatient? It serves inpatient for all of the Claremore area, or excuse me, all the Tahlequah area. Four counties, five counties, Brett? Or more inpatient, or so this is Hastings, Hastings compact money for this is, CHISDA, I guess, right? Yeah. Outpatient for everything, excluding Tulsa, Rogers, and Craig. Craig, I'm going to make sure. So Craig, Tulsa, Rogers, and Ottawa are excluded from outpatient. And that sliver is the sliver. Okay, and Macintosh. So five of the 14 counties are excluded. And Wagner, so we've got six. At least from, so how many counties does Hastings normally include? From a, from a Hastings service unit, it includes just uh, Calipaw, Sequoia, Adair, and then the outpatient from the state. I think that was what was attached to the initial Hastings service unit. I think so we have service units. Service units, the service units for Claremore, the service unit for Claremore has uh, basically, I could call it that 412 and North line. Hey, right. Those are from there. We have since contacted, when we started our clinics, we contacted the jurisdiction in those jurisdictions. So uh, Delaware, Mays, Nevada, or could you provide us an updated chart so that all minds are clear on that? And then what was the RTW MERP? That's additional uh, return to work. MERP is the medical, medical equipment resource. 
Okay. Now, originally, I think this was funded by tribal dollars, correct? Sure, but now, so it, it, it sure still is. So this is tribal monies yes. that we've set aside in the budget and can control. And then, and is that open to all 14 counties? Okay, and then, but it's not open to border communities or at large communities. That's only jurisdiction service area. And then the substance abuse was really the SAMPS, originally the SAMPSA, like, um, behavioral health. But so, like, if I, uh, if there was an alcohol or drug addiction, you would get some kind of vouchers to, I mean, what does this was pay for? Was the, uh, the yes, which we don't But this is anymore. now tribal money that pays for Substance. vouchers to rehab centers, or what does this do? Substance abuse is IHS money that's categorized as behavioral health funds. So they're, they're the gatekeepers, and we basically just pay for this for what they say. But this is contract health service, so it's outpatient, like a rehab center, whether it's that we don't have, right? And those are generally, it's a five-day, it's a 20-day day inpatient stay. And now that's tribal dollars or it's IHS? IHS, what you said. Rehab, IHS, and who is eligible? Is it all or all the counties or part of the counties? I'd have to check with BJ on that. Can you, can really, you confirm? Yeah, I can confirm that. Because we function as a place basically the favor. And then on dentures and eyes, is that all counties or is it just some counties? That's 14, that's 14 counties. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Brett. And Chuck. Yes. Those venture eyeglass funds are tribal funds as well. So with the million nine and the eight hundred thousand are coming compliments you all to help with uh, our patients' needs. And that the CHS is a very confusing jurisdictional area and where and what the money goes to. We'll try to provide something for you next month uh, that, that Brett puts together and then if it's not enough or if it's not all that you need and want to know, we'll build upon that and continue to grow it until it meets your needs. Um, the, the CHS review summary, um, we'll take a look at the paper that looks like this, not the flow chart, but the other one remaining paper. Uh, Mr. Hayes put this together too to give you an idea of um, how many items, or how many uh, patients have been looked at, how many are approved and attended, and how many are denied. And uh, I'll let him come to speak to that too since Councilor Watts has some detailed questions. But uh, in particular, if you take a look at the out of area and the non Cherokee percentage, uh, 30.27 and 37.70, uh, if you take a look at that, about 68% of uh, people that they have been looking at are not eligible for the funds the way that we're, we're currently using them. They're either out of our tribal jurisdictional service area for CHS or they're non-Cherokee citizens. So um, and we have been seeing, um, take a look at that number, approximately 1,000 a week. Okay. This is for seven months. Seven months. But I'll let you come up and... Just one minute, I've made a mistake before you bring Brett up. I forgot Councillor Lang was on the list. He had a question for you. Uh, Sorry. Okay. First of all, the CIH, uh, this is the 5%. Yes, sir. How much in these 5% funds have been utilized from what's referred to as the Hastings area? I don't have that information with me today, but we can get it. So you're asking for the multi-county area around Hastings? That well, would be. I, I think you all split it off between the Fairmore area and the Hastings area, <coughs> basically. And as I understood it, Hastings area had a acceptance rate of almost 100%. And at one time we had almost, uh, what was it, 30, something like that. And I may be wrong about that percentage, but that's why we enable the five percent. So now is the five percent being utilized in an area that already has almost one hundred percent covered? I don't have any number of percentages, but yes, it's been used for some other stuff. We get the new sequestration and other things. 
So your answer is yes, uh, it's being used for other than just that sort of fair more overflow area. And we can try to get you a report that shows a percentage breakdown if you'd like. And of course you don't know how much. Not Are we trying to hide that number from me? No, not what's at all. going on? Not at all. We tried to bring everything we were asked of last time and we'll continue to bring things that you ask each time. Well, I'm still getting phone calls about 5%. So I know that we're not doing something right there. There's a call missing somewhere. And so if, if that money is available, it should be utilized if they're Cherokee and if they're in the 14 counties on the north of Fort Worth, CIHS area, whatever you want to call it. So where, where's the breakdown? I've been asking that for months now. No answer from you guys. I, I mean, I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think we believe that we've been trying to work it out that we are capturing all those people. Uh, if you're I, getting some phone I'm calls. Saying, but I'm, we're still getting phone calls, so that means if I get one phone call, I think there's 10 more out there that didn't call me. They just said the heck with it. I'll pay it or I'll take the bad credit when it goes to the credit agency and all that kind of stuff. Well, but, but I, Sometimes find is when somebody like when you give me a picture to look at and discuss is it's it's not necessarily to hit the system yet. It's they've been denied and it's current. You know, if I've got a need for a back MRI and I get that denied, I'm calling somebody. Uh, the system kind of works its way out over time, but that doesn't help that patient that backs hurt today. We got got a denial later in the mail today. That's stored to what I see. Uh, Councilor Kim. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the 5% CNH funds uh, distributed are on page 18 in the report. Um, if everyone wants to look at that. But I vividly remember it was 96% uh, on the report at the time we voted this for, uh, for or against this. 96%. And I guess um, and I remember that vividly because it was so high at the time yet we couldn't make it a law that we would spend the 5% for the area you're talking about, Councilor Lay. Um, but however, it is in policy, and you can see by the report that it has moved up, still not as high as this this uh, area, but it, it's uh, improved uh, but by policy only. Um, so that's a, that's a good, a positive thing, and I thank your staff for uh, Helping with that, and, but there are um, probably what 40 percent somewhere around there still not being served, or maybe 40 to 50 percent. So um, that still does need a lot of work. Um, I wish I wish it was 96 percent here approval rate and 96 percent approval rate in our jurisdiction too. That would be ideal, or somewhere close along the, uh, the same line. So. Um, Thank you, Madam Chair. Is that? Well, I had something I wanted to comment back to Councilor Keener, and I may be wrong, but I'm proud that it is moving up to 61%, but I thought one of the reasons that looked on paper the denial was so high was because many of these are not Cherokees that are denied. There are other, uh, other tribes where it's, that makes, is that true? 68% aren't eligible, either because they don't live in the 14 county area or they're not Cherokee. Well, I thought that was what was making the denial rate look so big out of proportion, but we want everybody that is a legal citizen that lives in the right area to get whatever it is they deserve, but I am proud that it is going higher. We're making progress. That's all I have to say. I didn't mean to interrupt you before I get. I mean, our the volume of our historical CHS program, we see anywhere from uh, 190 to 300 referrals a day, and that's for all of us. For, that's for all the clinics in Hastings. Uh, so that's I would estimate about 20. We've probably seen 29,000 referrals come through for approval for this year, excluding the, these. You know, the eligible out of this for 5% out of for this year is. Under 1,500. So that's 
what, six weeks worth of our, I mean, it's a, it's a volume issue. It's, we, we have a significant volume, and that's, you know, Novata and Salina and Jay are part of that, and Benita, they're part of that, so. Councilor Cameron, were you through? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, Councilor Hustle, what's your name? Thank you, Madam Chair. When you, when you bring back the numbers that Councilman Lay asked for, um, I don't have the policy in front of me. And as Councilor Keenan pointed out, there was some uh, language in there about where the money would be spent. Could you just identify the part of the policy that gave you the flexibility to spend in, for lack of better words, the Hastings area? just so we can understand how the policy was followed. And then secondly, to follow up on that, Chair Lady's point, I would really good to kind of compare apples to apples here, make sure that when we see a percentage in the Hastings area, it's 96, that we're, we're looking for the same comparable percentage or comparable number in Claremore so we don't have to take out the non-Cherokees. It's just so we can kind of see how the two are comparing. I don't know if that's possible, but it would be good to, to be able to see how many of our people are getting helped in the Claremore area and how many are we helping here. And like Councilman Keener says, we hope they both are sky high. All well, and one thing we've initiated to, to talk about doing is to compact both Craig County and Tulsa and Rogers County to roll into our outpatient CHS package with the others, which would, which would be a more seamless way to do it. That'd be wonderful. That would be great. That's, we've, we've contacted IHS, we've talked with them on conference calls, but it's a matter of them getting back to us with a number. We did this about, it seems like three years ago, but it's probably six, with Rogers and Tulsa. And it was a, you know, it's really a matter of, they say, we're going to give you X amount, X point X million for this. And at the time we looked at it, it was, to me, it was X point X times 3.5. So it's a, now we have now we do have money we can supplement it with. So that's I, I appreciate Madam Chair them taking that initiative. Uh, it's very well, good. I know it's very, very complicated. When I first got elected I didn't understand it at all. And then Chief Joe Grayson sat down and gave me a tutorial about when the IHS drew their little circles years ago and it didn't coincide with their boundaries of the tribes and it's federal government always doesn't do what's best for us, so but we are making progress, but I don't want the counselors from that area to think that we're trying to discriminate against them because we're not. I want everybody to be treated the same. Okay. Madam Chair, just one follow-up question. This may be a question for George, but I remember folks in our area, George is still here, but folks in our area who maybe didn't have a chart at Claremore, they were maybe went to the Benita Clinic and then they were denied. There was some discussion about, well, could there be some sort of way to make it seamless to where you can sort of give full faith and credit to the fact that they are Cherokee citizens? <clears throat> I know it's just been a month, George, but is there any updates on that? I went back and addressed that, and, and there was a way that we could do that. Let me get it. I'll have it written up for you next time, okay. and then bring that back to you. Thank you, George. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. I, I just wanted to make sure I understood. This is the 5%, right? Yes, and it's just the... the Patients that we're getting that are denied out of Claremore. Okay, so we had 1,489 that were eligible. You all approved our, the 5% took care of 986. And this pending, that means that they've not got all the way through either. Correct. Have they been approved and just not used the money by not going to the doctor yet? Or? Typically, it's a, it's, it's a patient that had ER call in. And we give George the opportunity to serve first. So we'll, we will find, we'll go back and look, and they've been approved. So, so but, we, but then they're in the ER call-in category. So if, if somebody has a, a, let's say they have a, they think they have a heart attack today, they go to the ER, they go to the, they, somebody calls the ambulance, they go to the ER, and they create an <coughs> ER call-in, and Claremore denies it, it's in the denied category, or it's deferred. Okay. Anyway, it's, it's a deferral slash denial, and they have 30 days to get the records, and then they consider it on appeal. So we, we send out a you know, letter that says let that process proceed and get us a copy of the review. So. Okay, so 
I, I guess what I'm, what I'm seeing here is you had 1,489 eligible. You've got 986 that have been approved. You've got 469 in the system. And you only had 25 of 1,489 that's been denied. I'm missing something here because that's better than that's better than Hastings. That's I mean because we can't serve the non-Cherokees with this money, and I assume we weren't serving the out of area with this money, so that only left the 1489. And if you only turn down 25, you got like a 97 percent of uh, there either 97 percent has been approved or is in the system. Right. And a lot of the these pendants will come back that uh, Claire Warren George can tell me when it's it doesn't kind of change the policy that if it came out of Hastings or Claremore, it's the pendant was one of the key question about the pendant cases. Almost a hundred percent of those it's pending medical records. If somebody if Brett goes to the hospital, goes to an ER out here on an emergency. Will they be back, approved? eventually is most of them going to be approved in y'all's opinion i don't that's kind of a coin flip it depends that's why we're not doing anything and are these the ones we're getting calls we, we would get calls on. On. yeah yeah because we need the records from the hospital they went to and when they call when the patient calls in we tell them we need records and if we don't have them within 30 days we what we've been doing is denying them and then and usually whenever they appeal they will they will get those records to us once it's denied. So once you get this four hundred and sixty nine, either yes or no, mm -hmm. then you'll move you're you're at seventy some percent and that could move you as high as ninety seven. But we know the number's gonna be somewhere between the seventy one that you gave us and the ninety seven if every one of these was approved. So we have the money to service it. Yes. It's just a matter of you and George working it out with the patient and making sure that they get the records to you so that somebody's going to pay it. Correct. Okay. We use the information that they provide. We get a copy of us for that. You are calling. Well, this is very enlightening, enlightening because I kept hearing this number of almost 5,000. But when you whittle it down, because there's 17 tribes there that's being served by Claremore uh, facility, when you whittle it down, obviously we can't take the Cherokee money and use for the non-Cherokee. We can't take the Cherokee money at this point in time and use out of area because we don't even do that at Hastings. Uh, when you whittle it down, it becomes a fairly manageable picture then, is what, I, what I'm seeing. And to be honest, the, the eligible... The out of area non Cherokee is, is when we go through this, if they're if they miss one of them, they're not they're not eligible. So they might be they might be both. You know, they, can be, they can be both out of area and non Cherokee. If they miss one of them, we're gonna it's like that approach. Well, I just wanted to make sure I understood how this was set up and thank you all. Oh, I've got one other point I want to say. <laughs> it's not very realistic to think that maybe we need to move the timeline a little bit. It's going to be done in 30 days because if you go to any major clinic, hospital, whatever, they're slower than Christmas to send you those bills for you to turn in. So it takes our people much longer than 30 days to round up what they need to turn it in. So I'm just trying to make a point here. A lot of those that are pending will eventually get done, but uh, it seems like. The hospitals and clinics are very eager to turn you over to a collection agency, but they don't send you the original statement in a timely manner. That's my point. So, okay, Councilor Fishenhawk, I think you're next. Jerry, you want to hand up to speak? Yeah, sure. How's the 90 days long prescription? Dr. Montgomery and, and Jeff are here to give you an update on that if you'd like. Uh, we're going to wait to see if there's any more questions about oh, this, and okay, we can do that. Then. The calling person, we used to be able to, they used to be able to punch a button if they don't want to talk to the machine, you can punch a button and talk to a live person. Is that still going on? With pharmacy? Sure. Yes, okay, it's still going on. Okay. If not, let me know. Okay. What is our ratio of <coughs> charts to doctors, our different clinics? I'd like to see it. Thank you. Go down my clinic. 
and the camping groups doing the feasibility study? Yes. Where are they at? Brian? Our continued work is when you get to the of Chicago, and they have offices throughout the United States. Where the Chicago their main office? It's not their main office. I want to say their main office may be in Los Angeles. Okay. And I would like to see a chart of all our core hires and their positions. We're hoping this uh, table summary of how many have actually come across our desk would, would make people feel a little more comfortable about things to see that uh, the 1489, we have a huge percentage of those that are either approved or in process. Gives cooperation pretty much. How many is on that board? I, was I think they allow one rep from every tribe. So it's a pretty good sized board. Probably about this size. Interesting. They all show up. Yeah. Well, we're very fortunate there to not have to deal with such bureaucracy here at Hastings. It is, a, you know, still a, a, a issue and a problem, but we're very fortunate not to have so many tribes in here. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, next is Councilor Lay. Thank you, Madam Chair. The CIH review summary; those numbers stay about the same every time. So. Nothing ever fully gets worked out. Um, the contract held paid was 3.9 million. The contract held approved is 1.18 million. So there's about three million dollars that's unaccounted for here. So I'm I'm saying that the numbers don't add up. I'm saying that the money doesn't add up. And anyways, that, that's all. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Councilor Garner. Uh, just one point. Uh, there's 1,489 eligible, 986 approved, 469 pending, and 25 denied. So that leaves nine missing. Nine people. Yeah. Miss Pritchett here. It's hopefully a spreadsheet there. Hopefully they're not really missing. Uh, they're missing on this that. list. Uh, <laughs> We've always got a mathematician to correct the facts. Councilor Watts. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so two things I guess on the chart are you going to post that online for folks so they kind of understand the process because there's so much confusion flow chart yes okay. if there's a way to make that available where we can point folks to it I think that would help with folks that visualize things or you know never use this program they're already hurting then the other part is I did find it's 1480s the total between the approved pended and denied so if you look at it uh, and I have questions about eligible out of area and non-Cherokee, but if you look at the approved, it's 66.6% .6 of 1480, uh, which is better. Uh, we've climbed, uh, they wouldn't have been served, I don't believe, at all, had, had this not been approved for outside or in covered Clamorini and Hospital. Assuming the pending is covered, that it is an ER call-in that would be covered by Clamorini Indian Hospital, that does make that eligible group 98.3 percent those are 31.7 percent of that 1480 so we're only we're denying less than two percent which that's exciting I mean that is absolutely but to make sure that I understand I think if we added I'd be curious from the past month so when you forward in the next month's report because you guys have been great about geographically breaking it down in a chart I can see that every month uh, and for, it is on page 18 as Councilman Keener pointed out but if we had the pended, so for this this month it'd be 469, I would be curious next month as an additional data point 
how many were covered by Claremore Indian Hospital and then how many were broken out and covered or not covered by us of the 469. Because when we look at a snapshot of this month, we don't know, those people are in limbo. We don't know really how to count them. Are we serving them or not? And then on the out of area, do we know all of those, what appears to be 1,480, are all Cherokee Nation citizens that are at large that have applied? Or could they be anyone? They could be anyone. They're just, when I look at it, the first page comes up, and if it says uh, Sand Springs, they get the right record. I could go to the next page if, they, if it says Claremont, then I go to the next page. Is it are the Cherokee? Yes. Go to the travel registration database, look up Brett Hayes. Not in there. Uh, so there's because a, this appears to be a huge unmet need. I mean, it's very significant, but it may, that may be misleading then as a number because we don't know how many of those are Cherokee Nation citizens yeah. or not. There'll be some, you know, 10 to 12 or 15 percent based upon the payment. Right, and we want you to move quickly because these folks are wondering how to pay these bills. So, on the non Cherokee part, do we have an idea if those are like all you Katua or are they creek supplying or how does that work? I would, in my parents, the majority are another tribe or creek. A lot for some that are Cherokee but don't have a CDIP card. No, they have CDIB, but not a citizenship card. Okay, that's so it. what are we doing for those folks? Because that's an emergency, immediate need for medical care. Are we going to registration and asking for them to help, or are we denying them because we can't meet the needs of registration? Well, they're just they're not eligible. They're not. Do we, often do we inform them that that citizenship part's missing? Is that what you mean? Right, that's what you Okay. So there is often they either don't have a card. Or the potential to that, 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 that happens. Okay, very helpful. Thank you both, Dr. Graham and Brett. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. We have a request of some information that we'll uh, get captured and try to bring back to you next month. Anything else on CHS? Uh, well, no, not on that. So are we moving to? Yes. I, I just are you here, Dr. Graham? Yes. Okay. I, I just had a question about. That leak, those leaky walls at Narcona, uh, have we been able to look into that? I think that was brought up a couple months ago. Or is that just. Uh, I don't have an update for you. Maybe if you, you just know, follow so, up in the yeah. next meeting on that. And how, how is PACE doing? Or, uh, could we maybe get a little report on them next time, too? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll move on. Um, I was going to give a brief update on the uh, construction projects, and then uh, after I do that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Hale for the issues with the uh, feasibility study on Hastings, and then uh, with Dr. Montgomery again on recruitment update and 90-day prescriptions. Um, the Redbird Health Clinic, uh, the new additional 30,000 square feet uh, annex. Uh, the 65% design drawings were submitted on May the 7th and construction documents for review are scheduled for June 11th, so uh, this week. Um, the bid package for site work uh, it has been reviewed or is in the process of being reviewed and um, selection made shortly and groundbreaking is scheduled for June the 17th. I uh, hope everyone has gotten an invitation to that already. So how are we doing on tariff compliance? Uh, we're following all the tariff laws, as, as far as I know. Uh, in all the meetings, those considerations get talked about all the time. Did we get a report, I guess, from CRC or HWH, I don't know who it is. That was CNCR. CNCR, okay, so on like how many subcontractors they're using or contractors now and how many of those are tarot. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I see you want that for all facilities. Yes, yes. <coughs> We're spending a lot of money. I hope it's with tarot. The beginning parts have been, I'll tell you that, with the any &E firms that are selected. Uh, from the beginning, they were both the tarot. So. The OSHA lady, um, we had a design kickoff meeting with the uh, 
Felter Schaefer Architects. They were the architects selected for both Social Ada and uh, Sam Hyder. Uh, that was held on May 24th uh, here at the complex. Uh, a departmental design meeting was held with each of the departmental administrators from that facility on May the 29th. They discussed space and programming requirements for uh, that facility. Uh, architects are now uh, revising the floor plans, the exterior design, and the site plans for the programs, and we have a meeting scheduled with them on June the 12th uh, at 8.30 uh, here in the Tribal Services Conference Room at the complex. Um, we're awaiting two responses back on the environmental assessment, uh, and then that will be complete. Any questions about OSHA later? The uh, Sam Hyder Community Health Center uh, is right now slated uh, for 42,000 square feet. We had a design kickoff meeting with the architects for that on the 24th. Uh, then a departmental design meeting, like I described earlier, on May the 29th with the uh, department heads of each of those programs. Uh, the next programming meeting is scheduled for June the 12th, also this week. And uh, the architect, Seltzer Schaefer, will be revising the floor plans, the exterior design, and the site plans based on uh, the multiple meetings that have been held so far. Um, the environmental assessment for that uh, site has been completed. The Wilma Mankiller Health Center is going to be an approximate 28,000 square foot addition to that existing facility. And the architects that were chosen for that uh, were the children's architects. And I mentioned earlier, both of those architects, Elser Schaefer and Childers, are tarot firms. We had an initial kickoff uh, design meeting on June the 6th with uh, their staff uh, in Health Administration Conference. Um, the environmental on that site has also been completed. Uh, we don't have, I don't have in my calendar uh, the second meeting scheduled for that one to, to get back, but uh, I think as you can tell, everything's moving very quickly on these facilities. We're having meetings uh, almost monthly, uh, excuse me, weekly, uh, and sometimes they're every other week depending on the time uh, in between meetings that usually the architect needs to get design drawings ready for staff to review again. Um, I will, if there's not any other questions about the outpatient clinics, I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Hale and he can talk about the hospital and then if you have any overall questions about uh, any of the construction things that we're doing and we can talk about them with you. Before he comes up, I've got something I want to share with Council. Um, Councilor Snell and Hargis and myself, we met with Children's Architects up at Villa P to go over their plans that they had complete. And we're very impressed by it. They've done a lot of work and study on how to save steps for the doctors and the nurses. And it was the latest concept of the, the pod in the middle with the exam rooms all around. And basically we were pretty happy with it, but I will say I was disappointed that we had asked for a wellness slash fitness center in all of our new clinics. And they have one built in at Redbird very small, it's for the employees only, and I said, well, that's a start. You know, it was a thousand square feet, and it would have about 15 machines in there. Very small room, but it is a start. It's not what we really wanted, but I know that we're not printing money in the back room, so uh, it was an improvement over what we did have, but we're very happy with plans, and basically I thought the ones for Wilma P, I'm not an expert up there, but <laughs> There's some problems at the front door with the grade and how steep it is. And they're aware of that, but we're all aware of it too because we all go up there and we're all used to going to the east side. We're going to try to make the front, the north, the main entrance. And there's an eight foot grade there and they're going to try to reduce it down. Well, Jody knows all about it. So she'll figure it and out. And the meeting for where we'll be, we're having to get another one this week. So, but it was very enlightening and we enjoyed our visit with them. So I'm just yeah, I heard, I forgot to mention that, I heard about the meeting, heard one very well. We were happy, and we, we just want to, we're not the experts, but we want to be kept in the loop as to what is going on. I don't like to hear about it afterwards. We'll try to continue to keep you guys informed of all the things going on. There's a lot happening now in construction. We're excited about it. Mr. Hale? Yes, sir. Uh, before Mr. Hale speaks, 
let me tell you. He is Councillor Garvin and myself's cousin, and don't hold that against him. He managed to get this job unbeknownst to us, so we had no undue influence on him. He didn't know until our family reunion. Um, feasibility study update that we're doing with the Camden Group. It is a, the Camden Group, if you don't know, is a consulting firm. They specialize in healthcare, and they were uh, retained by acquisitions management as well as the treasurer's office to help us with this feasibility study. Uh, we had an on-site meeting on May 30th and 31st uh, when we actually gave them a tour of the facility. Uh, they had an opportunity to interview our key stakeholders, including administration, leadership, as well as the uh, medical providers, and also gave them a tour of the facility because really, until you tour the facility and kind of see the layout in our community, I don't think people have a, a full appreciation of the circumstances that we deal with. The main thing we're looking at is the assessment of the financial impact of operating additional as well as expanded services within the new facility. Uh, over the last few weeks, the majority of the work that we've done has been data gathering. That's looking at population and uh, demographic information and trends, as well as the projected impact of future utilization trends, uh, our medical staff profiles, recruitment plans for new providers, as well as anticipated changes in operations. Uh, we conducted some review of existing financial projections, as well as uh, future revenue assumptions and factors that would affect that. Uh, they're working on some financial models that will have uh, some sens uh, sensitivity analysis built into it so that we can adjust. One of the things that we're trying to build into this trend analysis is the Affordable Care Act and looking at how that may change things. Um, we've been conducting weekly conference calls with those consultants from the Canyon Group, making sure that we stay on track and stay on our timeline. The uh, next big milestone is going to be developing review of financial projections and in the final be uh, prepared, present, and finalize the report. And so it's going to be a feasibility study of the hospital as well as what contract and services should be included in that facility. Now be happy to answer any questions. Well, we're all anxiously awaiting the big number. <laughs> what it's going to cost. We are too. <laughs> What's our time frame here on the timeline is established is about a 15-week feasibility study. When we were on site, when we had the uh, gentleman on site, we expressed to them the need to try and expedite the timeline as much as possible, and they understand that. So we're trying to contract it. We're hoping to have a final report by late July. Okay. And I want to stress hoping. Okay. And they went and talked to you all, admin, doctors, they toured, I guess, the second floor of our yes, facility Yes, we showed them there. throughout the, all the annexes, the inpatient units, everywhere. But you did tell them the square footage of what you were proposing as far as the new hospital, right? They've seen this, all the different iterations of what we're proposing, yes. Okay, and they do know where we're putting the new hospital, is that correct? Yes, we showed them that side as well. And there's sufficient acreage there to, to take care of. Uh, how many acres are we going to need for the hospital? It will depend on how many services we end up putting in that facility and how big that facility needs to be and how many. One of the discussions is trying to go multi-level so that we preserve and minimize the footprint, preserve as much land as possible since we're kind of landlocked. And when you talk about contracting some things out, now we're going to do a large number of surgeries there, right? That's our plan. Okay. That's, so we're that's one of the main drivers behind surgery all this. suites to pay for the thing. Correct. Okay. I just want to make sure we're getting all this. And which we haven't chose a uh, a uh, architect yet. No, ma'am. Okay. And when we do, we're going we're going to talk some more, right? Yes. Because I, I it concerns me that we we have different architects within our health plan. I would have thought we'd have had one architect to do the whole health system and to keep it in somewhat looking like maybe what we've already got. Um, and instead it looks like we're breaking it up with different architects. And the thing about different architects is they're never going to do the same thing that, the, that another architect has done. They're going to try to put their own little personal uh, look to it, touch to it, and then we seem like we're getting different types of buildings. I, I, and I don't mean that as a criticism, but that I'm just, I don't want that to ha happen at the hospital. I've seen what's happened here with four clinics, 
and I kind of want I want them to be able to drive up to our hospital and say, hey, I know that's Cherokee National Hospital. Um, and, I, and I think you're working with, I understood that you all were working with the two that got the new architect to maybe get theirs more looking like what we already have at different places. And I think that's a good idea. I, I, I want to be able to to drive to a facility and see that it's Cherokee Nation's facility. And I'm, I'm hoping that you keep us in the loop on this hospital. And we absolutely will. Have, do we, have we made a decision on the number of square feet yet? Or is that still based on the That will be contingent on deciding what services go into the facility. And what services are we thinking about not going into the facility? I guess I'm... The, the things that would be really questionable is whether or not we put cardiology services in there. We know we're going to do an expansion of our obstetrical services, and the next question is how much cardiology do we want to put in there? We have a cardiologist recruited, as well as a radiologist that will need an MRI. So those are kind of the two big tickets, big square footage items that we're going to be deciding on. Okay. And you'll keep us advised? Yes, ma'am. And you think by the end of July, so now we just got one more meeting. That's, that is what we're pushing then. for. That's what I we're pushing for. I mean, but we can do special meetings if, uh, if the, and I know the chairperson probably would be sure. allow us to do that. I mean, don't spring this on us now, okay? This yeah. is too big a deal. But we agree. We don't want to. We want to make sure that you are fully informed and supportive of what's done. I take more than once a month, then. Okay. Okay, thank you. Well, I totally agree with what you say about the architects. And although Red Bird and Wilma P were the first clinics built, I still think they're the most beautiful. And I was very happy that they continued on with Children's Architect. And I really like the way they look. So, anyway, although others may have cost more money, I still think ours are the most beautiful. They look more Native American, that's what I think. It sounds like it sounds like though they're moving as quickly as they can. I had the same comments is that uh, make sure that the the design is authentic and Cherokee. We just have to do a little bit of research on that. Shouldn't take a whole lot, and we shouldn't have to short this thing on who our architects might be. There's only a couple of A&E firms really in our area that are big sure. enough to do something like this, and so we've been we have pretty regular meetings with CRC. And uh, I think they have kind of a short list developed for the And one thing we don't want to do, we've built too many buildings here at Cherokee Nation. The past few years, we get in them, but then a year, the roof's leaking. Can't go there. Not with this, not with the same something thing of this the, magnitude. Well, we see the same thing with the new emergency department and urgent care. We have a leak every time it rains. Okay. Well, just keep us abreast. It's sort of a big project, but we have confidence in you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Brian. Okay. I just want to update you on the staffing of the clinics and the hospital. When I came on board about a year ago, there were 28 vacancies. With your support of the uh, provider adjustment and compensation, we have currently nine vacancies. There's been some ebb and flow, some people who have left, some have been hired. Again, at the current time, there are nine vacancies. Again, this compares to 28 when I first came on board. Without mentioning specific names, I will tell you that there is a, let's see, there's a new position that's beginning at uh, the J Clinic today, the Sam Heider Clinic. She's a family practitioner. There's a position assistant that will begin in the middle of June, excuse me, in the middle of July at Sam Heider. Um, there's a vacancy at the Slida Clinic that's been there for the past year. We've not had any luck recruiting that position. There is an advanced practice nurse that is committed to work at Redbird Smith Health Center. So she'll be starting there in July. And we have potentially, actually they've made commitments too, uh, three providers in Benita. Uh, they're all family practitioners. There's also a dentist that will be beginning July 1st. So Benita has done very well. We've just had a lot of luck at the expense, I have to say, though, of, uh, of the Claremore Hospital. Two of those physicians are coming from their facility. Um, we're actually doing very well at Hastings. We've had a variety of recent hires. There's a general surgeon that's just been uh, recently hired and <coughs> started working, Dr. Nidick. Um, then we have a, several 
uh, different positions, some that have trained through the residency program through OSU, and then there's a resident you know, youth program that will be beginning at Hastings. So again, I, I'm very pleased to, to tell you that we're, we're filling these vacancies and we're hopefully maintaining good access uh, for church assistants and seat providers at the hospital and the clinic. Um, any questions about that? I just want to make sure, Dr. Montgomery, you had nine vacancies and then you started talking about we might get here and we might get there. It looks like you're getting pretty close to be, being staffed up. We're very close. Again, one place that's been, been tough is Salina. We've not had much interest there. But again, um, I'm just real pleased. Uh, Sam Hyder, again, we have two people that are potentially coming on board there. Three potential, actually, commitments from providers to be in Benita where we've had some trouble. And um, I, I think, and again, Hastings is doing very, very well. And uh, I'm very pleased to, and we're looking at doing some additional hires. The oral surgeon that was hired has been very busy there at Hastings. We're talking with an ophthalmologist who potentially could come and do some cases for us uh, here in Tahlequah. Again, that would be people having to drive from elsewhere, but again, there's some unique things that we're looking at. Hopefully, we'll be able to tell you more and give you some more exciting uh, news in the future. Well, thanks. Brian, Jeff, Dr. Montgomery, Brett, all of you gave good reports today. I appreciate it. Any other questions for Dr. Montgomery? I'm going to turn the discussion of the 90 day over to Mr. Sanders, if that's okay. Thank you. Just to provide you guys a brief update where we are, um, currently we're actively pursuing addendums to our contracts, both for our Pharmacy Benefit Management Corporation and our individual contracts, so that we can bill for 90 days with as many of them as we can. Um, I've had a brief meeting with the pharmacy supervisors last month. This month we're going to have a full meeting that the focus of the discussion will be for ideas and suggestions on ways that we may be able to come up with a working document um, that we, we hopefully can present at some point to you guys well before October 1st, of course. And lastly, um, I would like to meet with as many of you as possible, whether it be in a meeting, <coughs> phone call, face-to-face uh, -face I prefer so that we can discuss the expectations and the potential barriers and limitations so that we, we can develop something that would be a win-win for patients, Cherokee Nation's health system, and, and the council as well. Um, that's the current focus of where we are right now. We hope to have a, a more report as we move forward with the next meeting as well. We'll, we'll continue to report each month until we actually have a document. So I'll, I'll entertain questions. At this time, if anyone has any pharmacy related or otherwise. Jeff, how does it look? Does it look like we're going to get the amendments to the contracts or a good portion of them? I hate to say that I'm pleased we're seeing some, but we, we are. Um, we, we've got a few, I don't have an exact number, but you know what? Previous meetings, I could count on one hand how many we have that would allow us to fill, and I think now we're above two hands. Um, so we're, we're, we're getting better. The process is a little slow, especially working with our pharmacy benefits administrators. You know, they hold the majority of our contracts, and they negotiate not only for us, but for the conglomeration of, of clients that they serve. So that, that process has been a little bit slower. Um, I can talk to Ivan and see maybe next meeting I can get you some numbers and let you know where we were and where we're at with the total number of contracts that have actually been able to allow us to build an extended base supply. You know, one of those actually is our own Cherokee Nation health insurance held by employees, and um, I'm working with HR on that as well to, to make sure we can build an extended base supply for employees. Thank you. Sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Jeff. Thank you. That uh, concludes our report. Uh, any other questions you guys have about anything, we'll be happy to take them at this point. Okay, I would like for you to let Dr. Jones know we'd like for him to come next month and give us a report on what's going on with the dental. Okay, we will. I hope it's very good. There are good things going on. Uh, Councilor Kara Callen Watts. Thank you. On the, and, and this may be more for the next discussion, but there was no report breakdown on how much of those dollars went for like dentures and eyeglasses and 
the other things that are mentioned beyond cancer care or typical maybe emergency room contract health scenarios that folks think of. Uh, because I, the feedback we get from Rogers, Tulsa County, and other counties is they're, they're not getting access to those monies for dentures and hearing aids and eyeglasses and that kind of thing. So um, that also needs to be an additional detail in the report. I think can be part of the discussion on the next item. Thank you. Uh, um, I've always had good experiences at Hastings, always. Uh, but within the past month, I had noticed that we have quite a few of our employees that are letting their tags turn around so that there's no name shown. And I ran into that the other day and actually said something to the young lady about, well, you need to turn your tag around so people can see your name. And she never did turn the tag around. And I wonder if you could let them know that they need to, we're proud of them working there and we need to know what their name is. We can definitely give them a uh, reminder and that's also a requirement anyway of our accreditation mm -hmm. standards that, so the patients can know who's serving them. Well, I've had some ladies say something about it. I had encountered it once before and they flipped their tag around and this, this little young lady never did flip her tag around. I guess she just thought, well, it wasn't none of my business who she was, but I would have liked to have known what her name was because I was going to talk to someone about her. She never did, uh, she never would turn her tag around. Uh, was, so I don't know what that was all about. Maybe a little people skills could be interjected there too. We're, we're doing great on that too, some customer service. But we need that everywhere. I mean, sometimes I think that they don't view the patient as a customer, but we are. The patients are customers. And that encounter with anybody in our clinics or our hospital, it, we want it to be positive. We want it to be very positive. We want people to be proud that they got a job and proud to serve, that they're serving their people. And they need to exude that if they could. I know they're probably, maybe some of them's working a job or maybe two jobs or they've got other things on their mind, but uh, I, I still go to the clinics in the hospital because I like to be like the secret shopper. <laughs> Although I don't think I'm very secret, but. Uh, must have been from this young lady. <laughs> <laughs> if I'd have known who you were, I would have turned my thing back immediately. <laughs> but we will remind everyone about that. And we are, I didn't know if it was a little thing that was on, that it was causing it to flip over. Sometimes but, it is that. Um, the way it's set, and they just, they they just flip need, it so that it's set the other they way. They need to flip it back, because every once in a while I'll go somewhere and I'll see someone and I'll come back and brag about them. Uh, but I can't if I don't know their name. <laughs> and we've researched some solutions to that, to try and make it so that the names are always visible. Uh, Thank you all. Right, it's very good reports it. today. We'll send out an email as well about it to just remind people to make sure their name badges are visible. Thank you all. Councilor Fishenhoff, along with that, I've had one or two older people gripe because some young kids call them honey or bag or deer. And evidently older people don't like that. She got me. Could you ask them to address with Sir Amanda? No, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that good report. Moving on down to old business, uh, Councilor Lane. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we kind of hit on this a little bit before we go. I hate to be dead horse, but I'm going to say it one more time. It's almost 100% you get served in the Hastings area, and it's a lot less, and I've, I'm hearing some numbers I don't believe today. It's a lot less at the Claremore IHS area, and uh, 5% is not working like it's supposed to. I don't know how to quantify it. I, I, I keep wondering if we ought to send an independent accounting firm 
to, to monitor this thing and see what the heck's going on. And I'm just throwing that out there for your question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think it's become more evident that we really need to compact the Claremore Indian Hospital uh, contract health services, um, and in my opinion, also the Claremore Indian Hospital. Uh, it, it will take a lot of work, but I, I don't think without clear direction from this committee or the body as a council to the chief, I don't know that it will get done, so I don't know what reassurances we have to really address it. And, and I'm, I, I'm feeling more comfortable about in general contract health services. Uh, that goal is getting closer, even though I know I'm frustrated, my constituents are frustrated. But we're really missing the boat, I think, on the additional things we allocated in the law, being dentures and eyeglasses and hearing aids and those kind of things. Uh, but in the meantime, folks are hitting medical bankruptcy and a number of other things until there's a clear, definitive answer. And, and from what I can determine, the only way to do that is to compact uh, not just the Claremore Indian Hospital contract health service, but we also, our constituents in the jurisdictional service area are affected by the Creek Nation contract health dollars, I believe, as well as Miami. Is that correct? So there's really four CHISDA areas um, that are serving the Cherokees within the jurisdictional service area. But I think it's evident from the numbers that Cherokee Nation Health Services are able to serve compared to others, especially in Claremore, that our citizens are second class citizens if we continue down the path that we're continuing, at least in some areas. So if we can rectify that, I'd like to work with anybody at this table to make that happen. But I think we're going to have to have a resolution or act or something to compel the administration to move forward on this would just be my thought from what I understand. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, Councilor Bridgman. Now, can you tell me why Melissa and Chad, former Chief, Chief Smith, told you all that they did not, it wasn't going to do the tribe any good and they did not want to compact their more? You've told it to me before. Well, they just said there was too many tribes involved was the reason. But I kind of tend to think what Councilor Watts said is a good idea if we could get help to explore how we could come up to contract with them so that we wouldn't bypass them. Uh, I don't know a better word to say. Uh, but it, what I think Brad was talking about a while ago that we could have a package to roll them up, put them all together. We requested with the uh, the IHS. Indian Health Service, uh, the gentleman that is in charge of all that for some data, and we can re-request that. Because the first part is for us to say, here's what here's what we want to add. And the next part is for them to get us back you know, this many people, uh, you know, this much money. It comes, it's, if, if it's a, a county, you can go with Cherokee, uh, non-Cherokee, and uh, it's just a, it's four or five different categories. We've requested that data. We could definitely, you know, we Can you move forward on that? Because yes. I, I think it's a I, good idea. I think that's the, that's the to way. To petition them to grant us the. Because then there's some philosophical questions. Do you take, you know, so let's say Craig County. You know, we have a clinic there now. We, before we had a satellite clinic and Claremore had, or at the time Miami compacted for it. And then they gave it back to Claremore about four years ago. So, you know, do we take Cherokees? Do we take all Indians? I mean, do we treat Craig County differently than we treat Claremont from a jurisdictional? It's really more of a big picture philosophical question. Well, I'd like to see some look forward on that. If we come up with something next month and give us a report back. Yes, well, well, I, I appreciate that. I, because I, I thought I had heard in the report earlier that the administration was already exploring compacting contract health for those specific yes. counties. That would that would be a that would remove a lot of the symptoms. So, what I hear being expressed is that it's already happening. Well, it's already it's already being explored. Although we can we can have a little more urgency in our request. Good. I think mean, this is. Sure. Now I would point out, you know, we did the math for. I think the last fiscal year, we, it cost us 
I think four hundred ninety dollars a referral, you know, average over all of our referrals. So, you know, if we paid for, I think the total was forty eight hundred for all of the Claremont, all the Claremont nights would be, you know, two point something million. So, you know, I think the it's a volume issue to some extent. So. Well, this has been a real problem in the past, and we don't want anybody to think they're second class citizens just because they live in a certain area. Any other questions or comments? Councilor Light. I think one more thing. I, I want to get rid of this one way or the other. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion that we put this 5% set aside to the CIHS area only. Let's see if I can get the second one. A second with a friendly amendment within the jurisdictional service area. Yes. Second. And the Cherokee Nation. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you want this to be for the Claremore IHS area only. Council, what's question? Well, and I appreciate the sentiment. I, I had asked Dr. Grimm if by next meeting he could give us under what authority he had spent money outside of that area. If it turns out it's you know, there's reason to disagree whether there was authority under the policy, then the policy ought to be enforced. If the policy gave him that authority, then maybe there needs to be adjustment for a poli to the policy. I guess I would just encourage us to wait a month until he gets us that information so we can have it. And, and if I may, and I do appreciate that, but here, here's the thing. I've been after this for months and months before I ever put it in the book to try to get answers from the health department as to what the problems are. And I don't think they know what the problems are, but I do know this, and I hate to go down this road of doing north and south. I always said I would not do so. But when you're almost 100% in the Hastings area, service area, and you're a lot less, and I don't know what the number is now, in the Claremore service area, and something's not right, and this is my attempt to fix it. Okay, any other discussion? I guess I need the past act that set aside the 5%. Do we have that available so that we could review it? If that would be possible? I'm trying to figure out whether we've really got a situation or they're just slow getting your things <coughs> up around Claremore. Well, the, what we did was for the whole 14 year. And there was talk, discussion, if I'm not, excuse me. Go right ahead. Yes. And there was talk and discussion about making it and not withholding it for one area like was withheld from us for so many years, to be honest. And, and so, the idea was to give it to the whole 14 counties. And I like that idea, but it's not working. And if it's not working, I've got to take care of my people. And my people aren't getting served. You, Hastings area is getting served at almost 100%. We're doing a lot less, and that's that's my point. Well, Councilor I don't mean to be arguing. Well, no, I'm not arguing, because I agree with you. Okay. And it really does look bad on paper. And if this will help level the playing field, I am for what you're proposing. I know it's a controversial issue, but if I were sitting in your shoes, I'd feel the very same way. So that's what I have to say. Anybody else want to call me? Uh, okay, we've got several. Do I still have the floor? Yes. Uh, can you tell us how much of the 5% check is being used in the Hastings area? Do we, our breath, is there has there been some of that 5% used in the Hastings area? Yes, we have some. I don't need numbers. We have some. Can you get us those numbers by next month so we can be more educated yes. on this issue? Yeah. Or get it during the month okay. so that when we come to next month's meeting, we have an idea. We are we siphoning off a lot of money? Or I mean, I, I would ask that we get a little more information. Okay. And based on that, I, I would ask with all respect to to Councilman Lay to table this for one month to get that additional information. Thank you. If, if, 
Should I answer more? Yes. The answer is, I appreciate what you're saying, but we've been going at this for months and months and months. Fine. So okay. y'all can vote it down if you want to, but I'm, I'm posing the question. I call for the question. Well, I think I have a motion to make a motion to table it before. Uh, second. I'm sorry, I didn't I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we need to vote on this. Let's clarify this. Table it for Just one month so that they can get us information at the breakdown if we have been <coughs> using some of the funds and tell us if they're if we really or what we're going to do to get this 400 in the middle taken care of. Because right now, all I'm seeing on their form that they gave us was they had 25 turn downs. And my thinking is if you've only got 25 turn downs out of 1,489, you're doing better than we're doing at Hastings. But I guess since there's a motion on the table, <coughs> Motion on the table right. to table this for one month. I appreciate okay. you saying it. If you vote, yes, it is to table this for one month. That's what we're voting on. If you vote no, we continue on with, we'll vote on Councilor Light's original motion. Okay. Everybody that is in favor of tabling it for one month, answer by saying yes. Aye. 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 Who's opposed to it? Aye. Aye. Let's have a roll call vote on table. Jenny Fishinghop? Yes. Meredith Bradley? Yes. Janelle Fulbright? No. Don Garvin? No. Frankie Hargis? Yes. Chuck Huskin Jr.? Yes. Tyler Gloria Jordan? Yes. Lee Keener? No. Dick Lay? No. Curtis Snell? Yes. David Thornton? Yes. David Walkenstick? Yes. Eric Callan Watts? No. Bill England? No. Jack Baker? Yes. Joe Bird? Yes. Julia Coates? Yes. Eleven yes and six no. Okay, it is going to be tabled for one month. Can I ask for some additional information? If, if some of these funds have come towards Hastings and some of the referrals out of Hastings, what were the services for? If you could give us a breakdown of that. I guess you start with how much the 5% has, has provided us. And from that 5%, did we use some for Hastings? And does that preclude us from using, uh, of covering all of Claire Morris' needs? In other words, if we've had 1,489 referrals, and we do have a question about where the nine people went to, but if we had 1,489 referrals, you approved 986, so that money's gone. We got 469 in the middle, and I've seen 1.4 million set aside for that, so I'm assuming that's what you project if you approve these, that's what they're going to use. Is that is that yeah. and those are those numbers are based directly off of when Claremore enters the referral, they estimate what the cost is. So that's okay. those those are their numbers. So if those were all approved, we've got that money. I, I guess I'm trying to find out is money an issue or is the issue the fact that we're getting calls from the four hundred and sixty nine people that have not been approved. This is what we know right now. We are going to get you a lot more information before next month, and we'll try to I'll try to take note. We'll review the committee um, video and, and maybe try to throw in extra information too that we think is useful. Um, notwithstanding, if we're missing and we don't think the number is very big, a few maybe denture, eyeglass, or hearing aids, um, and we're trying to capture those too. With those numbers. We felt like there were sufficient funds to be able to start paying for things outside just that Claremore overflow area. So we felt like we did have sufficient funds to cover what we were seeing at Claremore and not jeopardize that component of the, the 
of the act that you all passed to give us these funds? Because just my opinion, I do not want Claremore to be short on money because we took it to Hastings. But if there is an overflow of money, they're available out of that 5%. Then I don't see what the harm was with, you, with using it for Hastings, uh, because at the end of the year it's going to roll in, it's going to roll back into a common pot. So if we weren't going to use it, why would we want to let it roll back into a pot where maybe it would go somewhere else besides what we intended it used to be? And that was the situation that we found ourselves in. Is that we felt like we were able to cover all the things that were coming in from Claremore as we were getting more experience with this. And so it was funds additional to that that were used in other locations. But I, but our first, on that 5%, I understood always our first uh, place that we were going to take care of was Claremore. And I believe we have treated them that way. And you're going to get us a whole lot more information and we'll have it well before the meeting next month, if that would be possible. That damn well before. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Madam Council Chair. Councilor Watts. Thank you. Um, one more piece of information while we're adding on the list. Could you uh, also catalog the time from the initial contact, especially at Claremore, that they contact Claremore Indian Hospital Contract Health Service to the point where we pay or, or at least some of them their fruit. Fred, that be very easy to get. Even if it's going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Councillor Walking Stick, you're next. It's up. Uh, page 18 on the report, which is 5%. NHS funds to do the communities. Um, what is, is, is this from Claremore? What's this for? That's the Claremore. That's the Claremore? Okay. And you guys are going to give us a breakdown of the other hospitals of the population next month. Is that correct? That's what you're doing. These numbers. I guess these are uh, clients or patients, 60 more patients, say, this is very more, where it says, uh, the uh, red numbers that are in there, that, that, that defines the patients. You guys have a report? It's uh, page 18. Page 18. It's right here. Yes. Those are the patients. All right, thank you. Clarification. Uh, Councilor Fisher, yeah, I, I, I have a question about the ground. I'm not, my, my area covers Claremore, it covers the Miami one, and it covers Payson. So I do have a question because I got three of them. Okay, I'm looking at, if I, you know, if there's 25 to 9 out of the 14, I'm going to call it 14 to 8, 14 to 9. Okay. There's a denial rate of 1.7%. When I turn to page 17 and look at it for Hastings, um, there was 164 denied, which is a denial rate of 2.4%. Okay? So we're denied at 2.4%. Hastings, uh, Claremore is only denied only 1.7%. Because what you're not showing on our contract health, you're showing how many was approved and how many was denied. And I think a lot of the confusion may lie in the pending because my people get denied and then they have to go through the process the same as Claremont does. I want to see how many lay in that pending area because the way I'm looking at it right now, they've got a better denial rate than we do. I mean, yeah, and, and what I'm using on theirs is the whole year to date, the physical year to date of 2013, the numbers that you just gave. <coughs> <clears throat> you know? No, they you know. You see what I'm asking for? Okay. Thank you. Councilor Lyle. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. And you're right. We're we're comparing apples to oranges sometimes because it makes their numbers look better sometimes. Health department. 
and that's what I'm, one of the things I'm trying to get at. The other thing is I've heard, you know, what to do with this money that's excess. There is no excess money in this fund. This fund stays and rolls unto itself. We did that specifically so the health department would not run down the road and do something else with it. And so let me reiterate that again. That fund stays to itself. That's what the legislation says. Thank you. Well, I've got one other comment. We're trying to get away from this concept of us and them. It's all together. And we're all working for that goal. But if you look at this contract health complicated sheet here, the mechanics of it is quite a bit. So that's why if you go down through here and you look at all this, it is very detailed. It has to be that way. And I'm just trying to make it more fair for every citizen regardless of where they live. I'm not sure I know how to go about doing it, but I'm very proud of leading this health committee and the directions that we're taking and the progress that we've made, but we all vote differently, but when we go out of here, I want us all to still be friends, so we're all still got the same <laughs> goal in mind, and that's all I've got to say. Anybody else got something they want to talk about? Yes. I agree with Nick. When you bring the numbers forward, would you bring everything forward for both sides, please? So that they're so the, comparing the same things. Yeah. I see the best thing is happening is what Brett proposes that we get all contract help under Hastings, then we don't have this problem. And the quicker you can do that, the better off all of us will be. I, I, I don't, I've never been able to grasp how we could take over Claremore with 17 tribes. But we can certainly control our own destiny, destiny with the contract help issue if we can get the government to understand that we want all the Cherokees in the same, in, in the same situation, and that has to be administered through one, one group. So the quicker, and my gosh, Chuck, with your abilities in Washington, make that happen. <laughs> we can, I think we can do that. Uh, and, and we had, as Brett said, been talking with the ISIS, but we, and given them the sense of urgency with which we wanted the information. So. It's very urgent now. Yeah, I can tell that. <laughs> we'll, we will, uh, you know, when we, we did look at that a number of years ago, and, and we decided we couldn't do it because the per capita dollars that we were going to get were so low um, that it just didn't make sense for us to do that, because then we'd be the ones telling them no. But now that you all have put this additional dividend funds that we can layer on to what we would get from the player more, makes it very doable, very reasonable for us to take that. Make that miracle happen in 30 days. I don't think it'll happen that fast. We'll, we hopefully we'll have an update to, to give to you about that as well, uh, CHS, next time. Then I think we'd all be on the same page. Wouldn't that be nice if all 17 of us were agreeing on the same would. page? Sure would. Then we could <laughs> move on to the yeah. next issue. Chief we're happy Byrne. to talk with you about whatever <laughs> issue. On the Claremore. Yes, sir. You would have to have a resolution or legislative back from each tribe. If we took the Claremore Hospital over, we would. But yes. Yes. But if we just asked for our CHS dollars for, say, Cherokees only in those three counties, and then maybe we were thinking about all uh, CHS, both inpatient and outpatient, Craig County, where Benita is now, that we could potentially, we, that we, if we just ask for in uh, outpatient only just for Cherokee citizens, we wouldn't need anything. If we ask for everyone, we'll see what the area tells us, uh, like for Benita, if we need to get any sort of resolutions or not. Well, that's a good option. That might be something that you could put together for us. Let us look at Give us some analogies right there and put a cost figure there. We would offend the other tribes, but we've got to take care of our own. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Yes. 
One more thing. I want to start in you know, all the clinics and all the hospitals, and I know it's going slow, but some of us is getting aggravated. And I know Hastings is towards the end, but when we give them a raise and talk to them and make the doctor satisfied, if you all remember, part of that was saying, we're going to build this hospital, we're going to be able to build more, therefore we can up your salaries, and the longer you wait, the more disgruntled they're going to get. So we also, along with the clinics, have got to start on that hospital, because you all going to start, the doctors are going to start saying, yeah, sure, all right, it was another empty promise, we've heard this from previous administrations, because I'm already starting to hear it. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Well, I think we've had a good meeting, and I want to thank everybody. And uh, Madam Chair, I make a motion to adjourn. You want second? Second. All in favor of adjournment? Uh, aye. Right. Next meeting is uh, Monday, July 15th. <laughs>